What's cracking, ladies and gentlemen? Fully Nine coming at you another community shoutcast for the OUSA Dirt League Season 2. We're loading into a winner's bracket playoff with a Sing 2 up against the Horseman of the Ruckus. So, Horseman of the Ruckus currently undefeated. Joining me as my co caster is uh, Too Easy, currently the four position player from our Team 5 IP. He'll be joining me as a co caster for this match. He still hasn't loaded in yet, so hopefully, he should be joining us fairly soon. But, Horseman of the Ruckus haven't lost a single game so far in any of their series, so it will be interesting to see if Sing 2 can drag it up to a game number 3 and take a game off them, or if they'll be the continue unless into the next uh, stage. So, uh, Too Easy, how you doing, mate? You there? I'm real good. I'm just going to adjust my mic a wee bit. All right. Is it good? Yep. Yeah. Uh, could be a little bit louder if you could adjust it higher, but otherwise... Should be good to go. So we've got a, yeah, a bit better. So we've got a faceless void, a first man coming up from Sing 2, so respect that over the Dumble D. Uh, Horseman and Ruckus, they're unusual in the sense that they like to run the faceless void as a one position farmer as opposed to the offlaner, which is what a lot of teams have been picking up for. Faceless void does give you that drafting flexibility, because you never know if he's a one position hero or if he's a three position, and that means that the rest of your draft you have to, you're forced to expand drafts to uh, bans to get a ban out here as a Sinjar as well with the void. So for instance, the Witch Doctor works very well with the void or against the void as well as heroes such as the Skyrath Mage or the Shadow Shaman. So that gives you that tremendous amount of flexibility. Uh, Sing 2, I believe they've got first pick for game number 1, so it will be interesting to see what hero uh, Horseman of the Ruckus decided to let slip through the first drafting phase. Ten seconds remaining. Since they've banned out the Brewmaster to hero they really don't want to deal with, just because it provides you such a huge amount of teamfight control in the early to mid game. But thoughts so far on the bans coming out too easy? Uh, it's pretty standard. Uh, is my volume all good for you now? Yeah, it's a lot better now. Okay, sweet. Yeah, no, real standard band so far. Nothing too interesting. It looks like these guys have obviously been watching some Dota games lately. With the whole Void, Lycan, Brew, and Tight Hunter band. Yeah, Lycan's are a pretty standard band. No team has really no, been nothing, nothing brave enough to let them so through. Far, yeah. And we've got a Tight Hunter band coming here from Horseman of the Ruckus. Yeah, they have given away Tinker, as well as the Doombringer. And this is a hero. Doombringer is usually a hero that's always banned out by the Horseman, unless they're able to uh, pick it up for themselves. But even then, usually TFO, the offlane player, doesn't really like playing I the Doombringer. They're leaving it because... Yeah, I think they're going to leave it because they're Radiant, and I don't think the Dire will pick it up just because it's way better on Radiant. Yeah, especially with the hard camp so I access. I think Horseman might actually get that. They might actually try to bait out the Doombringer pick, since Sing 2, if they don't pick up the Doombringer now, they know Horseman will definitely pick it up. They instead go for a Death Prophet. Very uh, unusual to see Death Prophet picked up this early on. It's a bit of a mistake, actually, because the Templar Assassin still is in the pool, Puck is still in the pool, there are a lot of heroes that can counteract the Death Prophet, especially with the Viper. So Horseman Ruckus, they could opt for any of those three options. The Viper probably going to be the most stable picker, since Viper does well in any 1v1 matchup. The only hero that could really do okay against the Viper is the Razor, and even then it's a bit of a 50-50. So I go for Clockwork, so Yuji TFO going to be on the offline, playing his favorite hero, the Clockwork Goblin. He, last ODL he was playing, he was known for his Mirana. This ODL, the Clockwork Goblin has been taking his place. One of the most powerful offline heroes, with the fact that the reason why Clockwork is so effective is, is if he ever catches a hero on his own, he can go for a solo kill. And with the Skywrath Mage, you've got the Cog into the Mystic Flare, so it gives you a huge amount of burst damage. And so it will be interesting to see what Sing 2 decide to pick up as their secondary hero. Since you know, Horseman the Ruckus, they actually haven't opted for any of the counters to the Death Prophet so far. You do have that pickoff power coming from the Clockwork Skywrath, but the, uh, the, Skywrath, the Viper, the Razor, as well as the Templar Assassin still in the pool. So we could be seeing something like a... We're actually going for a Dream Protector, so they're really oh, investing shit, a lot. I've been watching 5 IP. <laughs> yeah, Dream Protector here that has been seeing a bit of a comeback, just because of the strategic advantage you get from the Living Armor, and you also have that amazing level 1, that first blood potential. You start with Boots and the Dream Protector, you run up, you at least see them, they're dead. You can dive towers, you don't really have to give a damn. Dream Protector hits like an absolute truck, and with the Snare coming out from the Leech Seed as well as the Heal, you can uh, pretty much guarantee the first blood, unless if they have some kind of maneuverability ability, so for instance an anti-match with a Blink, or a Mirana with a Leap. Otherwise, it guarantees you a kill. So, Sing 2, they're going to be forced out to ban out the Templar Assassin or the Viper, or even both, to ensure that Death Prophet doesn't get destroyed in the mid lane. Since Death Prophet, she's a hero that only works well if she's ahead. If you break, even if you start to play from behind, unless you're able to take towers, but since it's difficult to take towers when you're playing from behind, Death Prophet starts to taper off. And so, the Dream Protector, it gives them a bit of an assurance to ensure that they don't lose that mid lane. But the Viper ban, exceptional ban, especially since the, all the dot damage coming out from Viper will burn off all the instances of the Living Armor. And so that means that if it is a TA against Death Prophet, while Death Prophet will still get heavily uh, beaten passively through CS, she won't, it'll be very difficult for the Templar to go for a kill. And so you can ensure that you can at least find some experience. But Horseman of the Ruckus with the Train Protector pickup, they know that as Sing 2, while they do have a lot of pushing power in the form of the Death Prophet, they don't have a lot of counting pusher power. Since the Train Protector, he only works well 
against pushing strats if it's a split push. If it's a if you group up as five and take the tower, you, the living armor gives you nothing. Tring protector can't really help defend the tower. He can't clear out the creep wave unless he's able to get in good position for the overgrowth. Yeah. And so by banning out the shadow shaman, they're Ten preventing that secondary support. What were you saying there? Too easy. Five seconds. It's pretty five rough landing against that clockwork as well, because like it's really hard to get in for a leech side. Because if he comes you once, time. then you have no mana mm -hmm. basically to cast it, because he's got such low mana problems. Yeah, and if clockwork ever gets the exp advantage as well, he could go for a solo kill. So they're banning out both the viper as well as the razor. They really don't want to deal with either of those heroes. They're both exceptional in that one v one role. And so they, they want to do everything in their power to make sure Death Prophet has a good mid lane. And that's what that's thing to his game plan, is that the Death Prophet is going to carry them through the early and mid game. If she's able to get the ball rolling and take these towers, not only does it open up the map in regards to uh, ganking from the other lanes, as well as ganking through the jungle, it also gives you that influx of gold to heroes such as the Train Protector. But if he's able to get an early blink, he can make a lot of solo plays on his own. He could jump in, use the overgrowth to set up for the rest of his team, and he'll be able to do a, a fair amount of damage. I'm just gonna quickly fiddle my settings real quickly just to make sure everything's fine and dandy. Don't think I can uh, turn you up at any further, mate. Oh, really? Yeah. It feels like I'm quiet because you don't really hear me. We've got a Doombringer ban now coming out from the Horsemen, so they really don't want to deal with the offlane Doombringer, especially since Doombringer is hard enough to bring down on his own with the living armor on top of the Scorched Earth. Very difficult to dislodge him from the lane. And the advantage of the Doombringer is he functions as a third core, and he, but he's able to rice a lot more effectively than the other uh, offlane heroes. And they're going for a tanker pickup. So tanker up against a Death Prophet. Death Prophet has the advantage in terms of lane control, but tanker with a two points of laser, he can actually harass out Death Prophet quite easily. And will at least break even. And Ken Killer, he's notorious for going for a very active early game build. We go for three points of laser, three points of missile before you start to opt for more points really of the well match. Yeah, and with the Skyrath match and the clockwork, you've got a huge amount of early game uh, potential. This is what Horseman the Ruckers they like to do when they want to play very aggressively. Since Tinker, he gives you a lot of late game assurance as well. He's the best late game here in the game simply because of the fact that he makes it almost impossible to breach high ground. If Tinker plays effectively, if he's able to get an early blink dagger. It's incredibly difficult to pick him off, unless you draft heroes as specific uh, counters to the tanker, such as the Storm Spirit or the Clinks. But even then, the only reliable counter to the tanker is going to be the Storm Spirit, because you have that guaranteed way to be a clear trees, and you've got the invulnerability when you zip in through much. Whereas the Clinks, if you mistime your blink and you blink into the wrong area, tanker can actually turn around and kill you. So there's always that, I think, the assurance that you have to keep in mind. If you don't gank tanker and shut him down, the first 15 minutes before he gets his boots of travels, and before he gets his blink dagger, very difficult to deal with them later on. They go for the next assassin, so a fantastic cannon to the tanker. All he has to do is pop the carapace and run into the march. And so that will stun out the tanker, prevents him from blinking out or using the ghost scepter. Then you kill him while he's trapped, while he's stunned up with the next assassin. So next assassin probably going to be foregoing points in the mana burn in exchange for maxing out the uh, carapace as soon as possible. So just points an impound carapace. And so next assassin could be the offlane hero, very powerful in the offlane, just because he's difficult to dislodge. He's got a huge amount of survivability with the fact that he's got two stuns, he can either pop the carapace to force you back, or he can turn around and impale you. As well as the fact that next assassin's got good base armor, he's actually got higher than usual uh, base regen at level 1. So uh, two additional HP per second, similar to the axe. And so it means that the next assassin, especially if he starts with a poor mention and gets pulled a few tangos, you're not going to be a, a dislodge amount with right clicks. He's going to be able to stay there and just leech EXP. He doesn't even really need too much gold. Once he hits level 6, he can run around gank across the map. Also works very well against the Skywrath Mage. The Skywrath Mage, huge amount of intelligence, very squishy hero. If he gets caught by the Vendetta Impale, Skywrath is dead instantly. If Skywrath ever plays aggressively against the Nyx, you can pop the Carapace. And later on to the game, once Nyx Assassin gets that maxed out mana burn, you can just hang back in these fights and just burn both the Clockwork as well as Skywrath. Tinker probably going to be out of range for the Nyx Assassin, but if you do catch him up the Carapace, it could be a turnaround kills. Thoughts so far on the uh, Nyx Assassin pickup? They're too easy? I think it's really good. He's such a strong offlaner if he does go in that solo position, especially with Trent as well to back him up. Like with that unnatural high region, and mm. if you if you pull him two tangos and he buys a poor man shield to start off with, he's pretty much unkillable. So I really like that pickup. Yeah, but once again, Nyx Assassin doesn't really offer you much pushing or counter pushing capability. And so Sing 2, with the Death Prophet, they do have an exp their draft does have an expiration date. The Death Prophet, you want to take as many objectives as possible in the first 35 minutes. You want to try and breach high ground, especially when you're playing against a tanker. And Horseman the Ruckus, I love this pickup. They're going for the Ogre. Picking something else. And so the Ogre Magi in conjunction yeah, with the Skyrath. Uh, Keep going. Yeah, really good. 
No, no, it's, it's all you, Matt. <laughs> so the reason why the Ogre works well to Skyrath is Skyrath gives you the initiation with the concussive shot, so Ogre can range for the fire blast. Ogre is also very tanky. He's, he's got the second highest EHP at level one. I believe the first highest is the uh, Spirit Breaker, and so because he's got such a huge amount of HP and a huge amount of base armor, he can walk in and tank shots while the Skyrath Mage hangs back in the wings and throwing out the Arcane Bolt. A bad pickup coming out from Sing Two, so ultra defensive support duo. Dream Protector with the Living Armor and Abaddon with the Aphotic Shield, unless if they decide to go for a core of Abaddon, which is something that Horsemen of the Ruckus, they like to do. So Dumbledore likes to play that uh, carry position Abaddon. But fifth bad coming up from Horsemen of the Ruckus, because the Abaddon can be run as a carry hero as well, they're not necessarily too sure what to be the balance. It could, if it's a support position in Abaddon, then in that case they want to ban out someone like a Luna, so someone that can play very aggressively, or somebody like a Weaver, since with the Dream Protector the Living Armor as well as the Aphotic Shield, Weaver can play a hyper aggressive, and Weaver's a hero that excels the first 10 15 minutes in the laning phase because he has such a huge amount of kill power, a huge amount of mobility. But unless you're able to make a lot of uh, kills happen in those 10 to 15 minutes, the Weaver does taper off unless he's able to find a huge amount of gold. But at pound for pound compared to other carries, much better off picking a much more stable mid to late game carry. So the Weaver, if you pick up a Weaver, you have to be able to play very active early on and make advantage of him. Since otherwise he'll start to taper off, especially with a tanker on the field. Since Weaver is a hero that relies on uh, dealing constant amounts of chip damage, he doesn't deal a huge amount of burst damage un until he's able to pick up that Desolator. Since the Skywrath Mage, he's very squishy, but the Ogre Magi on the Clockwork, very tanky heroes. And Tinker with the March Spam as well as the Rearm coming available will make it very difficult for Weaver to be able to do his thing in these fights unmolested. He'll constantly be running through March. If he gets caught out with the laser and the missile, he can actually die, so force him to blow the time lapse preemptively. Skywrath Mage can catch him out with the silence. And so the Weaver pickup could work because they've got the Trident Protector as well as the Abaddon. But that being said, they could just instead decide to go for a much more stable uh, one position farmer. So they could be, with Luna banned out, they could be opting for... They, de they definitely have to pick up a range carry in order to set this up. Since they they don't have anywhere else to be to start these ganks. And Trident Protector can run out with the lead seed, but the Abaddon doesn't have any kind of uh, hard stun. That's the biggest drawback of the Abaddon as a sport position hero. Is because he's so defensive... And because he's so greedy, you have to pick a very aggressive carry to synergize with the Abaddon to make up for his lack of offensive capability. But if it's a core position Abaddon, then in that case they could go for something maybe even like a Venomancer or a Vengeful Spirit to go with the Dream Protector. So if you pick a very another very aggressive uh, support hero, or you can even go for a Lich. Lich Tree works very well because you've got the overgrowth to set up the Chain Frost. But Horseman the Ruckus, what would you like to see them pick up as their one position? They're too easy. I don't know. It's pretty variable here because of the Ogre pickup. Like... Ogre can turn a semi carry into a fairly hard carry with the bloodlust and just the early game space creating and presence and stuff like that. So it might not be a traditional carry, which would be quite interesting to see. But they've got not much time left. So yeah, they've actually only got about three seconds. And Dumble D, yeah. they actually go for a Meepo. He's been practicing this hero, and so we're going to be seeing a Meepo in conjunction with the Skyrath Major. It could actually even be a Meepo like mid and a Tinker in the tri lane. Since if you're going to be playing this very aggressive, uh, that's a very aggressive trial line of Tinker is in that position, since you've got the Ogre, the like Skyrath match is set up for the Ogre, Ogre stuns, then you use the Ancient Seal and Tinker blows him up with a laser missile. And so that could be something that a Horseman of the Ruckus might do. Since Meepo does okay against Death Prophet with the 35% magic resistance compared to the 25% every other hero has, Meepo is actually surprisingly tanky. And so he can weather the storm up against yeah, a Death Prophet. And the advantage of Meepo in the mid lane, nice, like starting vision and stuff as well. Yeah, is because once he hits level three, he's very powerful. If the supports ever rotate, then Meepo can with the with level three with the two points up and poop, two hundred magic damage just coming out from the Meepos, not even including right clicks. And so they're going for a Wraith King. So we're going to be seeing an all melee trilane with four melee heroes over in Sing Two. Things could be a bit dicey, especially with the Clockwork. That Clockwork excels against melee heroes because you you either ensure you get free hits in with the uh, battery assault, or you get a free cog block. And the Cog pushback does a huge amount, especially since Abaddon, as well as the Tring Protector, very dependent on their mana pool, especially in the early stages of the game. Quick pause coming out from Sing 2, but the advantage of having four melee heroes is awful. Is their entire lineup is very tanky and very difficult to kill. Abaddon, he's got a Get Out of Jail free card with the uh, Borrow Time, as well as the Aphotic Shield that you could use to save his teammates, since it purges off all CC. The Nyx Assassin with the Carry Pace, very difficult to initiate on. Nyx has always got to be guaranteed to get that uh, Carry Pace off, un at least until BKB starts to come online. Wraith King, he's got Reincarnate, he doesn't care if you kill him, in fact if you kill him, it actually makes things a lot worse, because then you've got that Reincarnate to, to deal with. Pandy going to be picking up a Yule Scepter very early on, the Death Prophet, so she's going to be very difficult to bring down, especially once that Exorcism comes online. And the Train Protector, he's got great strength gain, he's going to be using that Living Armor on other heroes to keep them alive, so that they can man fight. And already Boots first starting up on him, so you're going to introduce the players from both teams, over on Sing 2, Goma Goma going to be the one position farmer as the Wraith King, starting with that Quelling Blade. John Snow is dead, otherwise known as Sing 2 Valerie, going to be playing that Nyx Assassin in the off lane. Looks like he's going for a Soul Ring Rush. 
As Sexy going to be playing the uh, full position train protector and Panny running into the mid lane as Death Prophet. Over for the boys in the horse from the Ruckus, UGTFO over in the signature clockwork Goblin. Method Man going to be running as the four position Sky Wrath Mage. Ken Killer going to be the two position uh, Tinker. Gat's going to be the five position Ogre Magi. And Dumbledee going to be the one position Meepo. Already starting a poof at one. What are your thoughts on the lane so far there? Too easy. Um, looked like Sinto wanted to get aggressive, but they kind of just backed out on themselves a little bit. I don't know what these guys... Oh, they're sitting up oh, over no. here. There That's we go. Cute. <laughs> There's some good um, positioning coming up from them. I don't know. 30 seconds. I'd, I'd maybe you want to talk to me about some of these item builds on Sinto and see what you think. I'm not really sure. I don't... There's a few few questionable decisions so far that I've seen. Yeah, Nyx Assassin starting with a very early Ring of Regen. You usually see Poor Man Shield up on the Nyx Assassin, especially if he's going to be running that solo up against the Clockwork. Since the Ring of Regen, it doesn't really give you all too much. I would much. like to see that as well. Yeah, you really do need the extra stats to be able to help out CS. Since the Clockwork, he actually has fairly high base damage. He's got a good animation as well. The Abaddon, fairly standard build coming up from him. No wards actually been placed early, uh, this early on. So we'd have actually liked to see a safety ward, or oh, in this case, since they're playing Ag Dry, at least an aggressive ward, so placed around there. So you could give vision uh, if supports are rotating in through here, as well as uh, where the enemy heroes are. So if they ever go for a pull, you know that they're pulling, and so you can play a hyper aggressive up against the two <laughs> other support heroes. Looks like we've got a quick, <laughs> quick pulls coming out, and looks like Gats and Method Man waiting in the wings. They holds from the rockers. They love to go for the level one gank on mid. They do this almost every single game if they're allowed to get away with it. And it gives it helps ensure that King Killer is able to snowball. And so Death Prophet, since she is a very squishy hero, has to be very careful. She's entirely reliant on her mobility to be able to stay alive. Doesn't have a lot of stats, so with the Anel Talisman as well as the two GG branches, it's gonna ensure that she's able to out CS Tinker at level one. Since Tinker and uh, King Killer actually opted for a much more greedy build, choosing not to go for Anel Talisman of his own. So first point up on laser. We've already got the sports for rotating again. Gats, he's gonna start out with the stun. Follows in the Fire Blast, Concussive Shot flies out, a little bit late coming up from Method Man, would've used it a bit earlier, but the Living Armor's there to be ensure that Pandy should be the survive unless they decide to really commit for this, and there we go, the first it comes out. Bit surprised that Gats actually opted for Fire Blast at 1, Ignite at 1 actually gives you a lot more value for that first point, and that meant that you didn't have to opt for the... More auto attacks. Yeah, you didn't have to opt for the Concussive Shot at that point. But usually Ogre Magi, it's always a bit of a toss-up, since Ignite at 1 actually does give you a lot more value, and Lambda Driver immediately placing a very greedy pub, well that's being pinged out. And Method Man Sentry is up on him, he should be able to get a very easy D-Ward. Lemon Driver has actually held onto his skill points for now. So he doesn't want to uh, leave anything to chance, he might have to offer a point to the Avernus if they got to play very aggressively, or a point to Shield, if they need it. And so waiting to until it, something happens, and Saxy, even though he went Boots first, forced to level Living Armor, and Gats with that haste he's leading the charge, goes on Goma Goma, and Dumbledee's smacking him up already. That could be the second kill going in favor of Horseman the Ruckus, Shield's been perched, and Method Man should be able to get the last oh, right click in. So he gets it, throws a concussive shot over a lambda driver. If Fothic Shield is on cooldown, I could choose to commit for this if they really want to, because they know that Living Armor's on cooldown. But they're backing off, they're just giving double D space. And Method Man, now poking Lambda Driver with some L's. The top lane, UGTFO, actually having a very good start. The next assassin with the lack of uh, base stats, as well as the lack of stealth shield, he can't really trade hits up against UGTFO. And if he gets a good cog block off and is able to push him back, he actually burns a fair amount of mana out. But the Soul Ring's now up for the next assassin, so he can use that to start to try to control the lane by spamming out the Impale. But that's his only avenue being to contest this lane. And King Killer, especially with that first play, he's actually being uh, out CS by Pandy. Pandy's got a few more denies. And now he's able to start controlling the lane, but he's already got the point up in the missile. So very active build coming up from King Killer. And with the two points up in laser, you could just feel free to just throw it out every time you see the enemy hero and just do a bit of chip damage. Because it's 160 pure damage that flies out to them. It's a very cost efficient nuke. And it's a great way for the uh, tanker to be able to control the lane. It's the reason why you usually see two points in laser if you're going for the passive march build. But if you're going for the missile build, having that burst damage means that Pandy has to be very careful. If his HP ever drops below a certain threshold, he can be taking a fall very quickly, especially with a few right clicks coming uh -oh, out. Uh oh, mid, mid, mid. No, that's not going to be a kill. It doesn't have enough damage to the missile. And the bot lane, Double D. Got a point up in the uh, split, so he's actually got his minion flying around. Sending it back to base to be the regen. And the advantage of having the Meepo as well is he can build a mech. Mech is a fantastic pickup on the Meepo because it gives you a huge increase in EHP. And having a mech for your team very early on, especially since it's your one position here picking it up, means that your team is able to take oh, these only engagements. The first kill mid. Yeah, and Pandy, he should be taking full now. Right click, laser followed by the missile. No way he should be going to get out of this. King Killer, there we go. Throws out the second right click to ensure the missile is going to do enough damage. 
So easy kill over to the Tinker. And Pandy, perhaps expecting Tinker to play a lot more passive, hasn't done his homework up against uh, Ken Gillis, and he plays incredibly aggressively with all of his heroes. He never likes to go for the a passive route or the farming route. He plays angry. He's an angry man. <laughs> Next Assassin throwing out the casual mana burns over the clockwork, so good recognition coming up from him since he's up against the solo offlane. Without soloing, he can afford to constantly throw out the mana burn every time it's off cooldown and control UGTFO. And the Baton actually gets a kill over an Ogre Magi as they dive, the Living Armor and the Apolic Shield giving them that turnaround. Curse of Avernus very early up on Lambda Driver. You usually see Miscoil at 2 on a, a support position in Baton. But the advantage of the Curse is if they ever do play very aggressive, especially since they've got 3 melee heroes, they probably do need the Curse in order to ensure they can get these kills. And so Ken Killer doing what Radiant Tinker does best, stacking up the engines every chance you get. So usually you want support to be able to do this, but you could also do it on your own. And so Gat's actually rotating into the top lane. I don't think they could go for a kill over Invalidly, because he's got the carapace up. But they're going for it anyway. Fire Blast flies up, sets up the cog, as well as the battery assault. And that actually could be a kill. He's got the carapace, he uses it now. Impel should be flying up from him very soon. They can actually get two-man Impel. L no living arm available, and Gat should be able to smack him down. Actually, UGTFO, jealous of Gat's gains, steals the kill with the flare. The uh, supports are smoking the tanker right now. Yeah, King, uh, Tinker's got to be very careful. King Killer <laughs> might get caught. That's turning on Pandy. Caught out the Leaf Seed. Throws out the March rising back away to provide some covering fire, but he should be taking fall. They could dive this. Crips will unfortunately missing. King Killer's still alive. He can actually turn. He's all good. Yeah. That Crips will, if it had latched, that would have been enough to go for the kill, but unfortunately, completely whiffed that one. So King Killer very happy with that. Actually, opted for two points in the uh, March machine. So he's going for a very uh, balanced build. like Jagger, man. Yeah, the moves like Jagger coming on at him. It's a very old school Tinker build coming up from him with two points in laser and missile before you opt to max out the march. And so the rationale behind it is it gives you the greatest mix of offense and defense. It lets you gank, it lets you control your lane, and it also means that you still have that farming mechanism because you want to make sure that you want have a few points up in march, especially if you're stacking your ancients. And so this is just to ensure he doesn't lose his lane, he's able to get a lot of farm from the lane. And then the points in march is to ensure that he's also able to capitalize on ancients. And so Sol Ring already up on him. Probably going to be opting for a point in March at around level 8, level 9, since you probably want a, few, a third point before you really uh, want it to be effective. Since because he has his lane control build, he can sit mid and get his farm from the mid lane. He doesn't have to rely on the Ancient to be able to accelerate his farm, he can instead use them to uh, give him that final push. So once he's got about 1,200, 1,400 gold, he can run, run over, clear out the, the triple Ancient stack and pick up his boots traps from there. Next Assassin has to be very Have careful. I a bug on my okay. Can you check Meepo's items and see if I've got a bug? It says he's got two Hedris recipes. No, he's just got... Oh yeah, he does. So Dumbledee. Misplay coming up from him. But, I mean, hey, he's only, lo he's only lost about 100 he's gold from that. <laughs> yeah, he does this sort of thing a fair amount. <laughs> you just EFO. Hookshot's now available. Have you taken a look at last hits and denies so far? It's pretty swaying towards Hawes. Yeah, Meepo, the advantage of Meepo as a safe lane farmer is once he gets that split, and Double D's doing it right now, you send the uh, other minion out to be able to clear out camps, and so you have obscene amounts of farm. Similar to a Naga Siren, or a Terra Blade, if you have that safe lane farm, you're able to pick up a few points in your illusions, you can send them in, farm up to the jungle while you're farming your lane. So good micro coming up from Double D. As the second Meepo is constantly rotating around, you can actually use it to set up kills as well if he wants to be extra Gosu, but he's instead playing, deciding to play for that farming route. So he knows that he's going to be able to help his team carry them through the mid game. So him and UGTFO are going to be carrying the mid game, and King Killer will be there to pull through in the late game. Since so the biggest drawback of the Meepo is you have to uh, combo him with another call in order for it to be really effective. Especially since uh, once you start to fall behind kills, because he leeches so much XP, but while I say that, Gats, Fire Blast, Laser, March flies out. Concussive Shock, very late coming out from Method Man, but they should be able to get that kill with the Arcane Bolt. Double support rotating in. Battle he hesitated on the Impale, actually wasn't able to get it. He carry paces very late as well to stun out uh, King Killers. So a bit of hesitation coming out from uh, Nyx Assassin, and Lambda Driver, he rotated far too slowly. This is the this biggest drawback of the Abaddon, is unless you're able to rotate as they gank you, or rotate very quickly and keep the enemy hero, your own hero alive, Abaddon doesn't really give you all too much as a support hero. And it's the reason why, when he is being picked up in the ODL, you usually see him in that carry position or in the core position, because he needs the farming levels to be really effective. And until he hits level 6, he is actually fairly squishy, since you're never going to be using the shield on yourself. You want to be using it ideally on your other heroes to keep them alive. So in that 4 or 5 position role, Abandon plays almost like a ranged hero. You want to hang back and constantly be in range to throw out the shield as well as the uh, miscoil. And Goma Goma actually has to be a bit careful. You don't want to uh, blow your reincarnate this early on. Actually, one of the things that a lot of pro players like to do when they play that Wraith uh, King, especially in the 4 position role, is you actually hold on to your 6 skill point. And so when you get ganked, that's when you skill a uh, reincarnate. So you know that you're using it when you want it. Otherwise, if you skill up reincarnate before a gank happens, 
or even if a gank happens you don't want to waste the reincarnate, that means that since reincarnate has such a long cooldown, by holding on to that skill point, you could choose to reincarnate when you want to. And so that gives you a lot of flexibility. Since the first oh, reincarnate is very they, important. They saw him Vendetta. Yeah, the Vendetta spotted up, but Gats There's also, Invis Rim mostly being wasted. Rotating to bot lane, Goma Goma. Has to be a bit careful. What the? And Dumble E playing a bit more active now. Actually spots out Gats, stuns him, there's a sentry wall being placed. And Skyrim has mage in the mid lane, kills off Valerie. Please don't miss, please don't- what? And Paddy once again looks what? like some questionable plays coming up from him as he whiffs that crypt swarm. King Killer, very lucky to be alive, he's gonna stack he up the engines. not to kill him. Yeah. I mean there's to buy a lotto ticket man, he just got given a life. <laughs> Meepo, like Dumble D, 500 gold off the mech, just casually throwing out concussive shots, doing his thing. So opting for a fairly standard build, oh, maxing out the arcane bolt. Oh there we go, so Dumble D, already got a mech up, so 9 minute mech coming out on your 1 position farmer. And he's actually opting for 1 point in net. So usually you see 2 points in net before Three you go for... This is the other carry. Yeah, points over in the Geo Strike. Since you need that second point in net to be then short latches, because the first level uh, AoE in the range for it isn't really that effective. But that being said, Earthbind, much easier to land now. The cast point's been changed from 0 0.5 to 0 0.3. It's a bit more forgiving to be the throw out. And in terms of golden experience, 4,000, actually 5,000 gold lead going in favor of Horseman the Ruckus. About 5,000 EXP lead. Dumble lead by far. Lean to CS scoreboard, 72 for 6. So that means he's gotten almost every single creep in lane, as well as a huge amount of jungle creeps. Huge TFO. Actually, the second mess, so King Killer actually hasn't been having a great amount of farm. 46 for 9. And he's already got a point boost to it. Method Man actually could be taken for right now. Panny's able to land that Crypt Swamp. Chooses not to dive him, so once again, decides to let Jamie live. And King Killer, now he's rotating into the jungle to be start clearing him out. Doesn't want to go for the Ancients just yet, so he's just choosing to stick with the uh, hard camp as well as the medium camp. He's got about 200 gold, so now he can rotate to the Ancients and clear him out. Yeah, it's been given a lot of uh, safe lane farming experience now that Dumbledee's rotated out. So now that he's got his multicast, he can start making plays happen. But the biggest drawback of the Ogre Magi is you want to constantly be chugging clarity. It's just because you burn through mana so quickly. There you go. He's got the clarity up on the courier. Then I ferry that over to him. So mana management, critical you factor. Bottle as well. So bottle up on him as well as on King Killer. A bit surprising since usually you only want one person with a bottle to be able to capitalize. And Sexy well, he actually caught out position with a hookshot from UGTFO, I actually didn't even use it, just caught him out with the phase boots. Turning around Valerie as well, John Snow's fucking dead, forced to use Vendetta. And UGTFO doing what he does best, just running over supports in the zone. Sentry ward being placed, so that's a Vendetta wasted and used defensively. And this Nyx Assassin pickup hasn't actually been accomplished all too much so far. And with Method Man there, UGTFO actually could go for a kill. If he catches him out with the hookshot, that could be enough. Concussive shot flies out, UGTFO choosing to hold onto the hookshot. There we go, now he uses it. Uh, Ancient Seal being used. Mystic Fire has now been leveled up. Uses it, unfortunately, catches him out below. If he placed it a little bit further back, he wouldn't be able to do, deal enough damage to kill off the next assassin. But Living Armor doing a lot of work to keep him alive, though. And supports immediately ro rotate his Lambda Driver and Sexy are now there. And while that's happening, though, Gomu Gomu left alone. Double D can actually go for a solo kill right now, trying to force off to reincarnate. Using Poof to be able to zone out the Wraith King. And with that mech up, he can actually choose to dive this if he really wants to. He's now got three Meepos, so he's constantly sending one back to the uh, Fountain to be the regen. And so having another one uh, rotate into the jungle, so this time he's keeping two with them to give him a lot more killing power. The reason why Meepo is so powerful in that one position roll is you should be able to hit level 16 by about 18 minutes. You can farm faster than you, and get more experience than almost any other hero in the game because you're leeching EXP. Each of the Meepos counts as a separate hero, so it actually can be a bit of a drawback in the later stage of the game when Meepos, when there's five Meepos in the team fight, you're receiving, he's receiving 80% of all the experience. So that means that your other heroes can start to fall off, especially since it's Meepo as well as a Tinker. And Tinker does the exact same thing, but with gold. Because he's constantly TPing and BOTing into lanes. Lambda Drive actually spots out Method Man. Method Man just runs past him. But he notices that the Abandon can't really capitalize. Since the Abandon doesn't have enough points to really be effective so far. And the experience lead, still about 5,000, about 5,500. Now that could be proved out to be the critical factor. Especially when your supports have a lot more experience. And Gats, he's almost got level 7. Once he gets that level 4 Fire Blast, if he ever gets a multicast, he can translate that into a kill. Those Ogre Magi pick up, been doing a lot of work, and Meepo in the bot lane kills Goma Goma, so he blew off the Reincarnate, he does take a fall. But that's Reincarnate, actually no, never mind, the Reincarnate is still on, so he used his mana to ensure that he wouldn't Reincarnate. That's actually a pretty good trade for them, but once again, UGTFO kills a band, looks like caught the rare end of that one. And he's about 1.5k yeah, off his about. Well. Yeah, so he's almost got his Aghanim Scepter, things get very messy once that comes online. 
And this Death Prophet pickup hasn't really been able to accomplish anything so far as well. Despite having the Exorcism up, hasn't used the Exorcism yet, and that's because there's always a hero in the mid lane, so every time Tinker rotates out, Gats rotates back in, and he pops the Invis ready, he's gonna look for a solo kill, up on Penny, Living Armor's now on cooldown and it's off. And King Killer's also waiting in the wings, since he can contribute with the missile as well as the laser. There we go, Gats runs in, multicast as well as the Ignite, March flies up from King Killer, laser, missile, one more right click, actually Living Armor's keeping him alive for now. Gats is diving for this, the stun flies out from Valerie, and Gats actually could be the turnaround kill as he overcommits for this. One more right click and Panic, he smacks him down. Concussive shot and missile flies out, King Killer's actually caught the stun. That living armor doing a lot of work. And <laughs> UGTFO once oh, again! Snipe. Actually snipes him up with a rocket, good plays coming out from him. And Gomu Gomu, he's got to be very careful. Looks like he's opting for a Desolator first and he picked up the Mithril Hammer. To Wraith King, you usually don't want to go for a BKB as your first item. Just because you, you need to give them a reason to be able to focus you first. Since you've got that reincarnate, and so you can play very YOLO. But Goma Goma, because his farm's been delayed, would have actually preferred an armlet. Maelstrom. Yeah, it could also be an, a Maelstrom. Maelstrom works very well. Would have actually preferred an armlet because it gives you more survivability. Double D. Actually, it looks like Valerie completely whiffed the stun, so he went for the Vendetta hit and then missed this stun. Double D can actually turn on this now that he's got supports coming in. Especially with Gats there. In the top lane, very aggressive warping play, so they want to ensure that they can take this tier 1 in the safe lane. Future TFO. Almost got his 200 call of his Aghanim Scepter, so it's going to be a 15 minute Aghanim Scepter up on the Clockwork Goblin. He should be able to start dominating the map. Valerie caught out the uh, Impales whilst the Earthbind. Uses the carry pace, but double he starts poofing in. And he's dead, unless he's got the Vendetta out. But no, Ogre Magi actually takes that kill. Crypt one flies out, Mech being forced by Dumbledore. Actually could opt to continue to go for this. Especially with the illusions up on them. The illusions on Meepo do a huge amount. Yeah, Meepo with a blink, especially this early on, can pretty much dictate the tempo of the game. He just runs around, kills anybody he spots out. Since you you channel your poof, you blink him with the main Meepo, the other Meepos then immediately poof to him. The sheer amount of burst damage coming up from that is usually enough to kill them. You don't even have to use the net. Or if you want to play a bit more safe, or if you don't have your timing down. Yeah, so the Aghanim Scepter now up on huge TFO. A 12 second hook shot, he could make so much space with that. And things are looking grim for Sing 2. Already an 11,000 gold lead in favor of Horseman of Ruckus. About a 9,000 EXP lead. Living armor isn't really helping you all too much when all the Meepos are smacking on your door. Abandon still no points up in this call. That they have now. The real problem they got now is they're behind against a Tinker and a Meepo, which just don't give you any room to catch up. So yeah. it's, it's going to be really hard for them to come back from this. I mean, a lot of this boils down to the draft. Things are having four melee heroes. They couldn't really play. They the only way they could have won their lanes if they played very aggressively. If they tried to play fairly passive, they'll call out a lot. Especially with that gank at one over on Pandy. King Killer now has a blink dagger, so good luck being able to kill him. <coughs> the Death Prophet, like as I was mentioning earlier, she's a hero that only works well if you're ahead, or at least if you're breaking even. They haven't taken a single tower from Horseman of the Ruckus, despite having the a superior push with the Exorcism. Goma Goma runs into the match, almost loses all his life. So the 5th pick, Wraith King, not really all too effective, especially when the Tinker's on the field, since he's always going to be running into March, and you never want to draft a carry that's going to sit in March. Especially when you're trying to breach high ground, it makes it very difficult. Hookshot comes over UGTFO, catches out Gomu Gomu, he's got Reincarnate though, turns around the stun over UGTFO, stands his ground, smacks him down, pops the Reincarnate, Exorcism is now being used, Overgrowth as well, Dumble D, actually caught out with a great 3-man impel, Mystic Flare being used over on Lambda Driver, Lambda Driver's got borrowed time, so he's not really too afraid. Crypt Swarm flies, actually whips. Method Man throws another concussive shot, Mech being forced, Double D actually on the back lane, he could be the one taking a fall here. As the March actually covering 5 coming up from it, doing a hit, fair amount of damage, pops the borrowed time. And Pandy, he's fairly low, once the Exorcism wears off, but he should be able to get that last turn over in Double D. Missiles now fly out, so Lambda Driver, no borrowed time up on him, Grave Silence over Method Man. Very messy back and forth fight, Gats runs and gets caught out the stun from Gomu Gomu, he actually could have turned around and stunned him. Lambda Driver though, he's going to be eating a fire blast, there we go, that's a kill. Gats now, he's got the Ignite available, he can turn around on Gomu Gomu. Gets a multicast, unfortunately flies over to a creep. And Pandy with the negative earn charge, forced off, but the Exorcism Spirits keep him alive. So very messy back and forth fight. Sync to actually come out ahead on that, as they get a kill over on Double D in exchange for the Abandon. Valerie runs forward, throws out a mana bar as well as the Impale, whips the Impale once again. And Method Man actually opting for a second point in Concussive Shot, would have actually preferred more points in the Ancient Seal. But that being said, the advantage of going in, in this kind of messy back and forth game is having the lower cooldown can actually mean a bit of a, a difference in these ganks, especially when they go for that long. Nah. If you can get that second cuss of shot off. I reckon Ancient Seal is Skyrath's best ability without a doubt. Yeah, like, by far. I would put four, four skill points in that, one, one in the bolt and then 
You can just the VR, the it, concussive shot and the bolt, whatever way you want it. It really so depends on what kind of... Because it just synergizes so well with their heroes. Like the fire blast, the laser, mm -hmm. or not laser because it's pure, but the rockets anyway, like, it's so good. They but do. the arcane bolt as well does give you a lot of killing power, especially with the ogre magi, because he's got, you've got the fire blast as well as the ignite, so you're guaranteed to get two, three, two to three arcane bolts off the fight on the ganking target, so then, and that, because you've got ogre to set you up, maxing the arcane bolt makes a lot more sense, unless that there's a hero such as an anti-image or a Mirana that you could try to pick off the ancient seal, or such a, a Pandarian Brewmaster. In that case, you want to max out the seal to ensure that you can prevent their initiation. So, very defensive warp in place by Sing 2. Just to ensure that they're not able to gank in, especially with a, a tier 1 now missing, they can't rotate in through their jungle. Defensive ward being placed, a fairly standard ward coming out from uh, the Horseman of the Ruckus to ensure their Ancients aren't being contested. Actually, Ancients haven't been cleared out at all. King Killer hasn't been using them all too much. You can use them right now to clear them out to get his Dagon, since he's very close to that. So we're seeing something like a 20 to 21 minute Dagon, unless they're able to get a kill. Vela leaves and Dennis. Marching machines are flying out. King Killer's gonna be very careful. He's actually going. Pop the Carapace to ensure the stun. There we go. Carapace comes out now, the Impel. Nice. And that should be a kill. So good recognition coming up in Valley. Since he's been whipping these impels, you want to just ensure you get that stun off. Since that kill over and can kill it, the lasers are Dagon by a fair amount. But while that's happening, Tear 2 is taking a lot of damage. And this is the other advantage of the Meepos, he's a very powerful pushing hero, just because there's so many of them. You just see catches that Lambda Drive, he's got Borrowed Time though, so he's probably not going to be a priority target. Pandy, he's the one that you want to be focusing, Borrowed Time's having force, but they Ignite as well as the multicast with the Ancients, he almost kills Pandy outright. Gat's being forced off. Uses the Invis room once again. He's been very lucky with those runes. Earthbind's flying out. Catches out sexy. Buying some time for Method Man. Turns around. Throws out the Mystic Flare. Hulk show everyone from UGTFO. Kills Pandy in the back line. UGTFO now caught a bit out of position, especially with three heroes there. Method Man turns around. Silences Goma Goma who runs in. Looks like he's going for a BKB. Multicast over and Lambda Driver blows him up. UGTFO, he could be the one taking a fall. He's actually standing his ground. Yeah, there we go. He finally takes a fall, but they're able to take two off the back line for that. As well as the tier two, taking a fair amount of damage. They can actually commit for this. And Sing 2 can't defend this. They don't have the reincarnate. They don't have the exorcism. And three of their heroes are down to boot. So King Killer, with that creep wave and with, a, with that tier two, should be picking up his Dagon. Playing like a man. Yeah, so you, Clockwork Goblin, more than happy to run in like that and throw his wife away, since he was able to set up all those kills. And that tattoo ensures King Killer's Dagon. Once that Dagon comes online, even though Sing 2 have very tanky heroes, the Death Prophet, because he doesn't have his Yule Scepter yet, he could be the one that takes a fall. Gats catch him up the stun, especially if he gets another multicast. Immediate kill over the Death Prophet, and that starts you in a fantastic position. So the two supports, the Train Protector and the Abaddon, haven't really been all too effective, just because you've picked up two very defensive supports, and you're carried. The Wraith King very aggressive, but because it's a triple melee try lane, not really able to achieve all too much. Gats catches out Sexy, throws out Fire Blast as well as the Ignite. Concussive Shot now flies from Method Man. He's got the Nature's Guys though, so he should be fine. Arcane Bolt flies up from him. Grey Silence over Method Man. Goma Goma, lead the charge, catches out Method Man. Oh, and with J Method Man caught out like that, he should be taking a fall. Gats also fleeing for his life, but Method Man, there's no way he could get out of this, especially with Goma Goma there in the wings. Cuts him down. UGTFO wants to go in on this, throws out the Flare, maybe he's still considering it. He's almost got his Blade Mail. He really does. He really wants to go. <laughs> Nyx Assassin picks up the Illusion Rune. So Veli, the next assassin pickup really hasn't been that effective. It uh, did set up that kill on Ken Killer, so they do have that potential to go for these uh, pickoff kills, but they, it was too little too late. They really haven't been shutting him down that much. And the net worth still going in favor of Horseman Ruckus, 15,000 gold lead. It's never been in favor of Sing 2. And that's just due to the fact that you had four melee heroes, as well as the fact that you decided to clash our uh, tri and They weren't actually able to accomplish anything. When uh, the supports rotated in at level 1, to gank the mid lane, they should have gone for a kill over on Dumble D. Me Meepo at level 1, while he is fairly tanky, he doesn't have any kind of escape mech, especially since he skilled Poof at 1 as opposed to the Earth point. And so he was a sitting duck that could have played very aggressively and dove him. But since Le uh, Sexy was forced to skill Living Armor to try to ensure that Panic could survive that, that meant that they couldn't play very aggressively. So they'll step back from the get go. The lack of a poor man shield over Nyx Assassin meant that he couldn't out deny, uh, he couldn't out CS or out deny a uh, UGTFO. So UGTFO got a obscene amount of farm. Goma Go runs and gets caught with the Cog. Cog actually popped it off. Uh, Veli as well, but he pops the carapace before he gets pushed back. Concussive shot, arcane bolt, Method Man's gonna be a bit careful. Look, Hulkshot flies from UGTF, unfortunately hits a creep. Then he gets caught out with the Impel as well as the Mana Bone. Crypt one flying out. Can kill it, BOTing in like a boss. Blinks into the trees, throws out the march as well as the missiles. And then forces off everyone. And actually, Veli gets blown up by a multi class. Mystic Flare, just to ensure he gets Mystic that kill. Mystic Flare though. Eh, that's a little low enough cooldown. Every time you get a kill, I say throw it out. Just in case I'm in the multicast. 
A Scarlet Red Mage, three points on the Custom Shot, so he's going for a bit of a split build. You usually want to max out the Ancient Seal, but because these fights are so scrappy, and because they're so sloppy with uh, both teams taking a while to go for these kills, having that extra point in the Concussive Shot, having the uh, shoulder cooldown in the Concussive Shot, could actually mean a difference when getting another kill. Especially if you're able to catch a hero as they back off. And that Bloodlust able to do a lot of work, especially with the Meepos. As the Geo Strike, the damage stacks up. You're turning into a robot. Am I? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you fine. Yeah, you, you just got a little bit robotic just there. Okay, could be some internet issues of mine, but while I said that, Gats got up the Grave Silence, Ancient Seal over in uh, Valley. Valley's actually taking a lot of damage from the Nick, from the Skyrath Mage. No Impel coming up from Moosby, hesitate with these Impels, uh, Gats gets blown up, Impel misses once again. Method Man, one more Crypt Storm coming up from Pounty, this time he's able to get it, and that ensures a kill. Dumbledore, he comes in the back line, catches out Sexy, smacks him down. There's four Meepos, there's an army of two coming up from him. As this UGTFO hookshots him, pops the mech in right time, borrow time be used, but Lambda Driver, he's left on his own, he's gonna be smacked down by Dumbledore. Goma Goma comes in, pops the BKB, but can be too little too late, gets one more right click, finishes off Dumbledore, duking out on uh, UGTFO with that 10 second BKB charge. The King Kill, he's waiting in the woods trying to help him out, Blade Meltdown being used, but the BKB just wears off him, without lasers able to secure the kill. So King Killer just stands his ground with some assistance from UGTFO. And Sing 2 getting completely wiped in exchange for 3. The gold lead continues to go in their favor. Almost 20, 19,000 gold lead in favor of Horseman the Ruckus. About 16,000 EXP lead. Things are looking very grim. Before the boys from Thailand, Ken Killer. That was now split pushing the top lane. That's well, pretty good considering how far behind they are. I suppose, I but the. That fight could have been a lot cleaner around here because the Sentry Ward got dropped here. Mm -hmm. And. Next assassin got silenced, and he walked from here to here before Thomas, I mean Gets, um, threw a stun, and it was off cooldown. He just kind of was looking somewhere else or something. I don't know. Yeah, Sentry One once again in place. They know he's there. Concussion shot flies. I usually have gets cockblock. Actually pushes back. Ancient Seal once again on Nyx. Valerie has been having a very difficult game. Catches out uh, Method Man. Sorry, turns around the Impel, but unfortunately Impel's cancelled. Gets turns around the uh, Ignite. Method Man gets blown apart, but King Kill's will get a kill in the backline. Mystic Flare being used. Land the driver. Borrow time pulse for him. Double D's still hitting him, so he doesn't really he give a damn. Care, eh? Yeah, with the, with the four Meepos and the Geo Strike, he knows yeah, he, he could kill him. him. He's just like, oh well. Goma Goma <laughs> backs off. Very messy engagement coming out, especially from Valley. He's been missing too many impels. Pandy gets called out the stars, well as the Ignite and Gats. That shouldn't be enough for a good kill. King Killer just Dagon's it for the lol. Level 4, level 5 Dagon oh, up nice. on King Killer. He's got a level 4. He got his, he's got level 5 Dagon. Yeah, 25 minutes Dagon, into the like, game. Four minutes ago. Things are looking very grim. Blink Dagger is now up on Meepo. And the Aghanim Scepter, so that's an extra Meepo you're adding to the party. So that's five. He's a five man party now. Dumbledee doesn't even need the rest of his team at this point. You're gonna run into them and smack him down. And Method Man almost got level 11. Looks like he could be going for what looks like a Yule Scepter of his own. So he kind of void stone up on him. So incredibly rich supports coming out from Horse from the Ruckus. The next assassin pick up, Valerie, he's been hesitating too much on these impales, he's been missing far, uh, far too many. Nowhere near the blink tag, Gats forces him some down forward, three man, uh, three multicast proc over Goma Goma, forces the BKB, but Geo strikes physical so goes through the BKB, Goma Goma backs away, that's a 9 second cooldown BKB, uh, 9 second duration BKB wasted. And we've got a 26 minute Yule Scepter, this is the incredibly uh, late Yule Scepter coming out from the Death Prophet. So she's 2 for 7, and Ken Killer split pushing the top lane, he's got that blink dagger. He's almost got his Ghost Scepter as well, so once he gets that Ghost Scepter, I don't think you can actually kill the Tinker unless you're able to catch him completely out of position, but even then, things are looking very grim for Sing 2. Method Man on his own. Valley this time might be the catch him up. Gats is also there, Ancient Seal flies, as well as the Mystic Flare, he styles all over the Nyx Assassin. The Nyx Assassin counts the Skyrath in the sense that if you catch him out, you could kill him, but the Skyrath manages able to catch you with the Silence, you're dead. Double D, poofing out of the lane, actually playing very aggressively now over in Lambda Driver. And Lemon Driver now finally opting for points in the uh, miscoil. Well, it could be too little too late. He's actually going for a bit of a carry build. So he picks up a Belt of Giant Strat. Maybe you're looking to pick up something like a Sage. It's so a Necronomicon. Not the greatest pickup for this particular game. Especially when you're playing this far from behind. And Gats with a 4 staff. He's almost got enough for a Blink Dagger as well. Ogre Magic actually scales very well to the late game. Especially if you can get an Aghanim Scepter. Just because it gives you that Iron Fine uh, Fire Blast. And that multicast as well. King Killer just with a Dagger in the missile. Almost kills Pandy. Gats boss ups and fell forward. Playing very balls deep. Silence flies out though, catch them out as well as the Aphotic Shield. So they actually could turn around that. Impel flies over UGTFO as well as the Carapace. And Meepo actually kills the Sexy in the back line. So the top lane, he's just doing his own thing. Aggressive ward being placed there, but that's immediately being pinged out, so they have to deal with this. You can't afford the enemy team to have vision on the high ground. Double D blinks in, unfortunately uh, missed time that, wasn't able to land the earth binds as well. He's earthbinding everywhere. And Double D just casually throws his caught fire in the position now. UGTFO comes in the back him up. 
Mech Beam forces once the Exorcism to play standard ground. It actually will be the kill of Patty. Patty he will slip himself up. Gats force himself in. Gomu Gomu gets blown up with the Mystic Flare. Actually, he's going to reincarnate back in a second. Impel flows over on Gats. Land the Driver. This abandon hasn't been accomplished anything. He's playing too far back, especially when he's got the Borrowed Time. King Kill is actually caught out. That could go for a kill. Gomu Gomu used the BKB, so it's a Desperation BKB coming out from keeping himself alive. Overgrowth now catches out too, and Katsy is just sitting there watching. Double the unfortunately missed times his blink uh, Q combo. Land the Driver at the Borrowed Time. Alive for a little bit longer, but that Cog Block caught in both of them. And then multicast from Gats. He should buy a lottery ticket the way he's been multicasting this game. And Chi Chi's already being called. Any final thoughts on the game? They're too easy. One step closer to the pizza. <laughs> so, victory pizza probably coming out from the boys and the horse and the ruckus. But a lot of this game, it just boils down to the drop. When you drop four melee heroes, especially if you have a triple melee tri lane. You have to play aggressive from one. You can't afford to steal that point living armor. He should have recognized that he could afford to give away the kill over the Death Prophet if they could translate that to a kill over, the, over on the Meepo. But they weren't able to get anything in that tri lane. And Gomu Gomu got completely zoned out. Since once Meepo gets the EXP lead, he can zone you quite effectively with Poof. And so you have to kill Meepo at 1 and level 2, especially with the, with the lineup that you have. So a bit of a questionable draft coming out from Sing 2. But all in all, it's going to take a quick break and we'll be right back for game number 2.